Hey, it's Bruce Berry. I'm back down here at the Caddis Fly in Eugene, Oregon with my trusty Regal Vice. Uh, last time I was down, uh, you know, kind of COVID was relaxing a little bit. Masks were coming off. People were starting to travel a little bit. And we thought it would be fun to do a series of saltwater flies for people that want to get out there and travel and fly fish. I know, I, I think I almost turned Christmas Island and fly fishing into a obsession. And I think about it daily. And that kind of COVID thing hurt when we couldn't travel and go do it. So we've done a bait fish. That one's up. Today we're going to do a couple of bonefish flies. Just a um, kind of two variations on a, on a guide fly that I figured out when we were fishing in Christmas Island, like on year three. And um, it's awesome. I mean, it's one that should be, I think, in every box for every flat. I gave some to Chris. He took them to, I don't know, Great Barrier Reef. Oh, where, where was that last trip he went to? <laughs> Seychelles. Seychelles. Seychelles Island. And he said he lost them like first day, hammered fish on them. So <laughs> the flies we're going to put together here in a minute are easy to tie, very few materials. There's a couple different ways to do it. And I think you guys will like it. So here we go. Just a few materials, a Tiemco 800S. I'm using a size eight today. If you're gonna be a saltwater tire, it's nice to be able to tie while you're fishing too. So being prepared and setting up a bunch of eyes. Uh, these are shrimp hooks. Might be a good idea for the next video, huh? <laughs> but um, sixes, eights, fours, you can even go down to tens when they get picky. This is an 800S. Pick a hook that you like. Um, this is a good one. This fly right here needs to be really kind of like three weighted sizes, same color. And um, so I'm gonna use a hairline. This is an extra small lead eye, just plain old lead, no tri-painted, no nothing. The other size I use for the heavier one is size small. Uh, then we've got some UV tan. You don't have to have the UV color, you can just go with tan, that's what I have, that's what I like. Um, and then we need some hair, so we either need for a wing a craft fur. We're actually going to do two flies today, one with each, so you can see the difference. And then I'm using a fin raccoon in this fly. Um, I wanted to show these two pieces of hair off just because a lot of times when people see hair in a store, they might pick the one with the nice big fancy guard hairs and the under fur. That to me is more of streamer or steelhead style. It might not be a steelhead color. And then you'll see pieces of fur that have very minimal guard hair in comparison and mostly under fur. That's the one that I would pick. I also like taking my wings off a strip rather than a large patch. So just razor blade through and cut a strap. Strip. Makes it easier to manage how much hair you're taking off there for the fly. So there we go. Um, we're going to start with a tannish. This is called sand thread. I'm using 6 aught. Um, and the last material we're going to need for this is some Pro resin. If you want these, um, like the last fly we did down here, I don't think it got posted like two weeks ago, but I think I tied it like two months ago. <laughs> these guys have been busy hammering videos and stuff, but we kind of talked about bait fish and maybe the idea that they can't be durable. Bonefish flies, it's nice to get a, a fly that you can fish maybe till lunch or maybe even the whole day. Um, you know, when you're on the flats in a place like Christmas Island, you'll get bonefish, you'll get triggers, you'll get yellow and red snapper. There's so many fish that'll eat this fly. Um, it's nice to have them durable, so I'm going to try to tie that and uh, as durable as can be. So we're gonna go one, two, three, four, five, six. I think everybody knows how to put eyes on a fly. Obviously they're on the top side so that the cook rag keels when you're fishing it. Six or seven wraps will take an aggressive cant to the eyes. And then most people will try to work them back to perpendicular, right, so they sit proper. I like, and this is kind of a little trick, you want these eyes on tight, that's part of the durability. So I'll actually rock them back the other way three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Maybe put as many as nine wraps so they're canted off this way and again, not even close to perpendicular. Now we're gonna take it back a third time. You can start feeling tension build. So you actually have to pull on this one to get it there. All right, those are fairly perpendicular now. Three, four, five, one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, one, two. Then some lasso wraps. So around the eye, under the hook, over the eye, under the hook, over the eye, under the hook. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And then last but not least, some posting wraps. So you tighten all that up. Four, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. 12. That's a pretty durable tie-in to finish it off and make them super durable. I like to turn the hook over. This I don't know how many people have used this glue. Um, some people hate UV resin. Good for you. This is really, really durable and it sticks to almost anything. So I'll put a little wedge in there. 
Loon light's probably the best. I don't know where mine is, so I'm using this one. Count to three-ish, it's done, and that makes them even that much tougher. So again, extra small lead eyes on a size eight. You could even go small eyes, a bigger eye on a size eight. And then the last one we would use, low tide or really spooky fish, is a like a medium or small bead chain. So three weights of the fly, same pattern. And um, now we'll move our thread to the back and just put a thread base down. We don't want the tail to foul, so just as the hook's starting to curve over or just behind the barb. And then back up. UV crystal flash. I'm going to pull six strands. Three, two, three, four, five, six. This is pretty interesting. More, most guides I've fished with over, I don't know, five weeks, maybe six weeks in Christmas Island. Sometimes well, five or six years, sometimes one week trips, sometimes two week trips. A lot of times they'll pull the fly in and look at it, a fish spook, and I always get asked, Bruce, can I cut the tail? Well, yeah, I don't live here, of course, cut the tail. And they cut them really short, I mean, super short. I don't know if that's a not foul thing or if that's just how they like them. So instead of tying like a shank length tail, which I actually, I actually have pinched right now, I'm gonna go from behind the eyes to just over the barb. So it's gonna be a little short, shorter than I think normal proportions would call for. All right, so I'll get that tie in point put it back, change hands, and from right behind the eyes, a couple good wraps in there, just work your way back. Then we're going to pick up the tail, Whoa. two wraps in behind tight, that'll splay it a little bit and kind of help keep it from fouling. All right, then we're gonna take the remainder of the flash, double it over, there's our body. Tan over tan is really boring, but you'll see the one splash of color in it, and this is a fly that came, um, there's, a, there's a guy named Eckes. A lot of you people that have been to the villages have fished with Eckes, and he'll come in, I mean, not only is he like just a cool dude, and my favorite guy, I'll spend half a day just learning how to cast better from the guy. So dot some resin down there. But he said that he saw some materials that he liked and asked if he could show me a fly. We oftentimes do that with each other. And so he said it's really boring, but if there was only one fly I could use for the flats from the ocean side to the lagoon side, this would be it. So we tied a dozen and we fished them. All right, once over the eyes, once back over the eyes. Leave this on the downside, tie it off. We're gonna leave that for a wing. And I'm just gonna take that up to the ring eye, tie in, boom. Okay, so now we've got wet resin. One, 1,000, two, 1,000, three, 1,000, four, 1,000, five. Probably longer than I needed to, but that's cured. And we'll flip it over. And I only want two sprigs of flash on each side of the wing, so we're gonna get rid of two of those. So we go, we're from six for the tail, wrap the six for the body, we cut out two in the front and we've got our secondary wing or flash. So now we're going to get in here and just try to figure out what is a good amount of hair for a wing. That looks pretty good. Let's try that. Much easier to do off of a quarter inch strip than a big huge patch. Okay, we get out the shorties so we get a good tie in. You can save this and make dubbing if you want. I'm gonna look for any ultra long guard hairs. Just kind of get rid of these. Minimal guard and under hair is pretty nice. So now I'm gonna measure the wing length. And I'm pretty much gonna go just a hair longer than the tail. And I like to cut my tie in points. So. Bring that down. OK, 
Okay. Actually, bring it back up. Now here's a splash of color for the fly. It's kind of tan on tan on tan. This hair color is called ginger. You could go with more of a bonefish tan if you want. And this is the important part. If you're putting colors on your eyes, that's fine. You'll see if you do try painted lead eyes, a lot of guys will ask if they can scratch the paint off of it so they actually catch fish. Standard lead. Um, and then when it comes to color, this color pink, this is Danville, I think it's called fluorescent pink, I can't remember the color code for it, but those super hot vibrant pinks, no bueno. This is the color they want. Shell pink. Shell pink. Yep. It's either fluorescent shell pink or shell pink, whatever. But most fly shops, even if they don't stock a lot of Danville, they'll color carry that shell pink color. It's dynamite. And that's going to be the splash of color on this fly. Okay, so we've got those on there. Bent back. Actually, I might just shorten both of those. Nice and neat thread head. Everything's covered up. That's good. And this was just because I happened to have the colors that the guys in Christmas Island liked. What they say is, is that they don't get the only time they really get materials when people are willing to leave it. So he saw some colors of stuff that he knew what to do with and it happened to be this color combination. A um, couple of guard hairs, but that's a good day in and day out, most conditions. Bonefish fly tight in a few different sizes and a few different weights. A next size larger lead dumbbell, uh, this extra small dumbbell and bead chain eyes. And there we go. Thanks for watching. Alright, so for a second video today, we got that first one done so quickly. Again, this is Bruce Berry. I'm down at the Caddis Fly Shop and we are going to put together essentially the same pattern with a craft fur wing on a size 6 hook with a larger eye. This is a hairline lead size small, so it'll be sinking into deeper flats or deeper places or high tide kind of fishing, that kind of stuff. And you could even go size 6 with a bead chain eye, but this is kind of a cool look and it'll be slightly different than that last fly we tied with the natural wing. So usually for the dumbbell eyes you want to give yourself some room to tie the wing in the front and I figure it's somewhere around 12 wraps. Just want a little gap there. In that eye program, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And these should can't heavy offset. And we're going to pull them back past perpendicular. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. That holds them cockeyed the opposite direction towards the tire. Now you can feel tension. We want these eyes to be stable. Four, five. That looks pretty good. Pretty level. All right, so now. And saddle wraps. And posting wraps. Really, if you're going to tie a durable fly, you might as well get these dumbbell or bead chain eyes tied in as snug as possible because if you don't do it right, one little bonefish will turn them. Caddy Womp is crazy. We're still in focus, I just moved the vise accidentally. Yep. All right, so that time I threw a whip finish just so I can turn it over and not lose any wraps. And this is the last step to making these eyes really durable. Pro Thin Flex Resin. Super tough stuff. Just goop up a little bit in there. Three or so seconds, maybe a four count, and it's set. Thread base down pretty quickly. Okay. 
and that's just behind the barb so that's a good place for the tail UV tan is that UV tan or is that UV bonefish tan? They make a bonefish tan too this is yeah, just so. UV tan either color works, I like them both so we have one, two, three, four, five, six strands And again, for tail proportions, I generally used to go from like kind of behind the ring eye to the tie-in point for the tail, which would be, you know, roughly a shank length. The guys in Christmas Island almost always ask me if they can cut them short. I'm not sure if it's for fouling or just the way they like them. So what I've been doing is going from behind the eyes to that thread point and pinch that so we tie them a little bit shorter. seems to be what the guides like. If the guides like it and the fish eat it, then I like it. Alright, and we'll prop the tail with a couple of wraps tight under the tail. Something like that. All right, and then the six strands of flash are going to turn into the body. So we'll just you know, get those tight behind the eyes. So you don't have a weird gap when you're wrapping forward. Bring them backwards. It builds just a little bit of bulk. Go back to that Pro Thin Flex resin just a little bit. We have these all come with needle tips now. I just like to shove a bodkin in it, and I just use the the bottle kind of the way it was designed. But if you need applications where where you put it on and how much if, especially if you're really trying to control the amount the little press on tips work great for that so we'll bring that thread up past the eyes and then work that tan flash over the tan thread once over the eye cross it tie it on the bottom and bring that tie out to the ring eye. Bobbin's too loose. Has that ever happened to you? <laughs> One more even. Click. There we go. I love right bobbins. Bobbins with the drag. Okay, that's wet and nasty. One, one thousand, two, one thousand, three, one thousand, four, one thousand, five. Good. Flip that over and then, right, so what alternate Christmas Island version B, since we already tied A. Someone just came in. And this craft fur these days, especially the good stuff, seems to have under fur as well. So we're going to comb out the super shorties. And then I want to take and, you know, pinch the back near the butt, grab those tips and just separate. And then I'm going to put those back together in a more uniform length, see what we got and figure out how much wing we need. That looks like about exactly as much wing as I wanted. So you get lucky every once in a while when you do it a lot. Okay, so and that length is going to be a little longer than the tail. Craft fur wings are really easy to shorten if you want to. Just like that. And like I said before, I like to cut my tie-in point. So there's my tie-in point. I'm going to give myself a few millimeters. Ooh, my straight cuts tie-in better. Here we go. All right, so <clears throat> this is a point where you got to wiggle your finger down past the hook point, get that in position, and I kind of crowd the ring eye with it a little bit. So we'll get that first wrap over it, all the hair, snug that up, second towards the eyes, third towards the eyes. Now you can kind of just inchworm that back so you don't have a crowded, ugly head. And craft fur. I mean, some people think it's harder to tie down. I'm really going to wedge some wraps between the dumbbells and that UV resin bump I put to make them tough. 
then that wing is going to be super stout. All right, so we have six pieces of flash from the body and tail. Twined up a little bit. Let me untwirl them. I want to ditch two of those like that. All right, now is when it's all basically a tan fly, and I want that splash of color being that shell pink. Threadmaster. Alright, so we'll take two sprigs of flash to the tire side, wrap it down and put them into position. Two sprigs of flash on the far side. Cut those to length. We'll just kind of tidy up the head a little bit. I'm going to go ahead and finish the head on this one. I didn't do it on the first fly, but I want you to see a couple things with that shell pink. Um, and the property has them to UV light and what fish potentially see. So I'll just dot a hair on there. There we go. Version 2. Awesome fly. Tons of fish and tons of flats. You can go anywhere with this fly. I think if I had one fly in the box, that would definitely be dozens of them. Thanks for stopping by and looking.